welcome also from my side. My name is Esther Amstad. Um and the goal will be, my goal is to show you, give you one example of what well, my career path, how I show you a little bit how I went through everything, what my considerations were. Um, it is important for me to say that there is not one path. It's like each one has his and her own paths. There is not a right and the wrong path. But my goal is to give you a, um, to tell you a few points that might be worth considering um, while planning your career as well. Um, as Paul already announced, I am Swiss. Switzerland is a small island within Europe. And if you still into Switzerland, I actually grew up in a very small village here in the center of Switzerland, which is surrounded by mountains. So I grew up in, in a very urban uh, area. You can see here there is quite steep mountains, small villages, a lot of farmers. So nobody is thinking about academia at all. So I was not thinking about it either. Um, but I liked, I liked science already from the beginning. And so actually it was pretty clear for me from the beginning that I would like to go to academia. Um, to, sorry, that I would like to study something. And it was also clear that it was something related to engineering. And so I just looked where is the closest place to study something. And I was lucky to have Zurich here, here, um, has a lake. You have mountains that are not as high. The city is much bigger, but at least it is within my country. And that shows you a bit the, the narrow thinking of the people that are living here. Which might or not, might not be good for me, it worked out, but it, it is dangerous. So I moved to Zurich and I studied at ETH, I studied material science. Um, the first two years we are in the center of ETH. Um, and then everything moved up about half an hour um, from the center way right to Hönkeberg, which is again a little bit in the in the forest, so I felt more at home. So that was in my favor. I guess I was one of the few ones that enjoyed that. Um, I studied with uh, the bachelor in between 2002 and 2005, and did then my master 2005 and 2007. As you can see, every, I did everything at Zurich. It has a reason. I was the first one. They just introduced the Bologna system um, at this year, actually. And so nobody really knew how to deal with it. And so what they said is, don't go abroad while you study because we don't know how to handle it. But I did want to go abroad. And so my question to them was, well, when should I go abroad? And they said, well, the easiest, the best thing to do is do it during the, bachelor, uh, the master's thesis. And that is what I did then. So at the end of the master, I wanted to move on. I wanted to, to see how research is done in a different place, simply because people are different, infrastructure is different. So I wanted to get a, a sort of an idea whether in the future this is something that I could imagine doing for a longer time or not. And I went to a professor that I liked from ETH and asked him if he knew people abroad. And he actually said he knew a, a nice person um, in Boston, at Boston University. And so I was, I, I didn't really have an opinion on where to go. I wanted to go to the US, but there in the US, I didn't care. So I went to Boston University. There was no mountains whatsoever, and I really enjoyed it for six months. You can see as far as, as your eye can actually, and there is no mountains that, that are in the way. City is significantly bigger, still it is a European city, which, which of course for me was an advantage as well. But uh, at this time I was too young to actually stay abroad, away from family and friends for a very long time. And so I knew I wanted to do a PhD, yet I didn't feel ready to do it in the US. One, because I already did my master. If you do a PhD in the US, then it takes you another six to nine years depending on the group you choose. Um, here it takes, say, four years or so, three to four years, depending on the country and, and the group you do it. So I was like, I was inclined to go back to Europe. And 
since I like ETH, I can see a reason why to move. Again, that is dangerous. Um, it worked out for me, but. So I went back to ETH, to the materials department, and I joined the laboratory of surface sciences simply because I liked the professor, I liked the atmosphere there, and I liked the topic. But to me, more important than the topic was actually the environment. I wanted to be in a group near your friends. And there is not too much competition. So I worked, I did my PhD within, uh, between 2007 and 11, so three and a half uh, years. And during this PhD, I worked on the surface functionalization of iron oxide particles. And the reason that I did that was that we wanted to use them for biomedical application as magnetic resonance contrast agents. And I always liked medicine, I always liked biology, but I couldn't deal, and this I realized during my master's thesis, I couldn't deal with cell cultures or biological samples myself because I couldn't deal with these huge errors that you get. So I was too unsure about it, and this, this, this drove me crazy. And so here I found a good compromise between doing science where you can reproduce your samples with uh, reasonable accuracy and having the link to biology to helping people, which, which really is something that is important to me up to now. Um, and then once the end came, or once I came closer to the end, the question is, what next? Should it be academia? Should it be industry? And I really didn't have a strong preference. The one thing I knew is now I spent a lot of time in Zurich. I wanted to move. I wanted to go abroad. And I did still like my, my six or eight months abroad in the US. So I sort of wanted to stay there, go there back, or go anywhere for a longer time just to, to learn how people are there, how research is done, or how um, research can be in academia or in industry is done at different places, differences in infrastructure. But if you're there for six months, you don't really get the full exposure to it. If you're there for one, two, three, four years, you get the full exposure. And I wanted to get that. So one thing that is nice about ETH and DPFL is that they do organize these industry days where a lot of companies come and present and you can go there and ask if they are interested in your program. And this is what I did. I went there, but I asked these companies if they had opportunities for me to join them, but then to go abroad. And their answer was yes, but you can go abroad for a couple of months, maybe a year, but not longer. And that was not quite what I looked for. By contrast, in, in academia, I knew if I want to go the academic um, path, I'm even required to do a postdoc abroad. I cannot do a PhD here, do a postdoc here, and then think that I can stay there for, for an, a professorship. That will never work. Well, very rarely work. And so to me then, this is not really a rational or uh, say science driven decision, but the easier choice was you just do a postdoc abroad. And if I don't like it, I go back. And I'm still young enough to then go to industry. The only danger that I knew from the beginning is I should then decide relatively quickly if I want to go back to industry or stay in academia. So okay, that was the decision then for academia, for a postdoc. Then the question was where? I've been in Switzerland, I've been in Boston, so where would I want to go? And again, the geography, the location was of second importance to me. Um, but there was one thing that fascinated me about Boston. I was here at Boston University, which is on this side of the river. I always was, for whatever reason, really fascinated by these famous universities like MIT, Harvard, and they're all on the other side of the river. So already during my master's thesis, I thought, sort of thought, well, it'd be really, really nice if I ever could work in one of the universities at the other side of the river. For some reason, I had the idea that this is the best thing that, that exists and there is the brightest people and, and so on. And I just wanted to get an idea or an impression of how that actually is. Um, and that I kept in mind during my whole PhD. And once it came to the question, be it to do a postdoc, of course I was sort of inclined 
to try one of these universities, but I never dared to think that I, that I get into one of these. At the same time, and that is something that helped me a lot, during the later stages of the PhD, I attended quite a few conferences and talks of professors that came and gave seminars. And one of them, he came to ETH, it was um, Dave Waits, and I had no idea about his work and, and his personality before, but he gave a really nice talk, nice in terms of how he presented. And one thing that fascinated me about what he presented is, he does microfluidics, and he produces drops. And these drops are very well-defined in size. And at this stage, I was struggling with my nanoparticles, and for those who work with nanoparticles, they know they have a very broad size distribution. I was trying to characterize them with scattering methods, and the peaks were really not defined because the size distribution is too broad. So I was very much struggling with them. And then I, well, I was in the middle of this evaluation of, of this attempt to make sense of my data when I went to listen to this talk and I saw these kind of drops. And I was like, that would be the dream. Then you can do scattering stuff and you have well-defined peaks and you can evaluate everything very accurately. And then once I looked him up, I realized that he's actually from Harvard. So he's even from the right side of the river in Boston. So then the question was, well, would he ever take somebody like me? And my answer to myself was, well, I'm sure not. But then I talked to others and they said, well, just write him an email. He's a nice guy. Just write him. And I was very surprised that within like four hours or so, he told me, well, if you have your own funding, just come. You're most welcome. But okay, that was very surprising. Nice. Now I only had the problem that I had to get some own funding. And there again, Switzerland is nice because we do have funding schemes that allow um, young postdocs to apply. And if you, um, and there are sort of competitive, but not too competitive. So usually if you write a decent proposal, you get this money and you can go to do a postdoc for one and a half years. So I did that, I got this money, and I moved to, to Harvard, to the right side of the river. So now I'm back in Boston again, so I was switching forces back to Boston. Um, I was there for three years, I very much enjoyed this, um, this stay, but I started also to realize really early on that yes, the density of excellent people at Harvard, at MIT, is very, very high. But they also only cook with water. They also have experiments that they, they also have better and worse people. It's like, it's also, like at each age, like everywhere, you have good and bad people. So to me, that sort of made me feel relieved because I thought that was the ivory tower and only thing, only the um, good things happen there. And a lot of good things happen there. A lot of very good people are there. But it's like every year, you have the whole spread. So that kind of put me back to reality a bit. Um, well, what's very different is the working atmosphere, the working hours, how you motivate research, how you communicate. So from these aspects, it was very insightful for me to actually have seen different places. And I've only seen two places, but I would highly recommend you to move around and go and look at different groups, look at different groups, look at different places, because really, it is different. And it doesn't mean you have to do it in the end, but it's good if you know, because then you can deal with it as well. Um, I initially wanted to go for two years, and I told families, I told friends, I'll go there for two years, let me go, but I'll, uh, for sure I'll come back. So after the two years, I was sort of happy there. I sort of started to feel I'm missing the mountains, I'm missing the European culture. So at some point I want to go back, but it was not clear when. And the people from the US, they actually told me, just do an assistant professorship in the US. Go back after. Because in the US you have so many more universities you can apply to. Stay with us for another four or six years, and then you go back. And I was in between, because at this point, I was not even sure if I really should stay in academia or if I still wanted to go to industry to do something, in my eyes, really useful. Because academia, it's much more remote, if you want. And so, I was for uh, the same question arose. Industry, academia, what should I do? And to be honest, at this point, 
towards the end of, say, 2013 or so, or even a little bit earlier, it was clear to me that I wanted to go back. But doing an assistant professorship in the U.S. is not that, what, I, what I personally want. Maybe for the academic career it would have been better, but it's something that I did not want. Then if I want to go back, is it going back to Europe? Is it going back to Switzerland? And there I was a little, uh, more open, but, and, and I just wanted to see what are the possibilities. So I applied. I applied to an industry. I applied to, I started looking around for academic jobs, though I thought it was too young, too unexperienced, it was difficult to get an academic job. So actually I had two offers from industry. Once I saw an, in, um, an ad on the internet from EPFL for an assistant professorship in material science. So to me, that sounded like the perfect position for me. But again, I didn't believe in it because I was, for the Swiss system, young, too young to apply. Um, ETH even told me you're too young, don't even try. Um, I was not sure if my, my skill set would be good enough no experience in leading people, and so on. And at this point, and that is important, I had very good people that I knew, um, nice people that I trusted. And actually, one of these people that helped me throughout uh, all the stages was my PhD advisor. Um, and I called him at this point. I told him, look, here is an ad. And I, I mean, to me, that sounds great. But I don't want to apply if they stop reading my CV after they see my date of birth, which in Switzerland, you have to, you have to come. So what would you do? I don't want to make myself look ridiculous. And he said, well, he thought that probably it was not that important, the age I should just apply, but he would, he would ask his friends. And so that is where the network becomes extremely important. And about a day later, he told me, you know, actually the department head, that is the, the, the head of the search, he's next week in Boston, he's at MRS, just talk to him. Time on the clock. So I wrote him an email, I met him, and he told me, apply. I don't know what happens, but I can assure you that your date, your, um, date of birth will not stop us from looking at your dossier. So I was excited and stressed at the same time. I did work a lot on writing my application, and I submitted it. And I thought, I'll never hear back from it. But right before Christmas, I met uh, a month later or so, I got an invitation for an interview um, at EPFL. I went to this interview, and right before I left the group, my postdoc advisor told me, you know, the people here, they did not ask me for a reference letter. So they invite you just because either you're a woman or a Swiss, but you have no chances whatsoever. Just go, enjoy it, but you have no chances whatsoever. So that was not very reassuring, but okay, it took a lot. Uh, it took off some of the pressure. So I went there. It was two two days of interviews, um, very packed days, stressful, but also exciting because I could see all the potential new colleagues, and I got a very good impression, which is something that also was extremely important for me because you get, you see you get a feeling about the atmosphere very very quickly. You get to see if you want to work with these people or not. Um, I had a very good impression. I also thought it would not have been too, too terrible the two days. I went back and about two months later, I got an email saying that you should come back for a second interview. And the people that know the system, they know actually then things look good. So I was very happy. I went back for the second interview. Things worked out. But they told me, you know, you're a bit too, uh, too young. So, Stay another year in Boston, do research, and then come back a year later. And that was actually something that was very smart. At this point, it was a bit disappointing for me because I wanted to go back to see friends, family, and so on. But in hindsight, it was an extremely valuable year because from a scientific point of view, I got out a lot of papers uh, which helped me, helped me now in establishing myself. I had time to actually think what I want to do with my group which is extremely important, and I had time to look for good people around that I would like to take along. And these are the three things that I did uh, in this last year. 
I could plan everything, and in 2014, I actually then joined EPFL as an assistant professor. So I'm back in Switzerland. I basically moved between Boston and Switzerland. Um, now the mountains are a little bit further away than where I grew up, but they're there, and I'm very happy about that. Um, and now, of course, the whole task completely changed. I was in the lab all the time. As a PhD student, as a postdoc, I was in the lab. I never, I hated writing, I hated data analysis, I just wanted to be in the lab, and I couldn't imagine to move away from it. But as soon as I uh, started here, the time I spent in the lab rapidly decreased, simply because I didn't have time anymore. And also, to be honest, at some point, I was a bit fed up. The experiments, I've seen them, I know how they work, but I also know how many that don't work. Um, that you need to be extremely patient. So I felt like it's now time to move on, to, to, to go one step further. And what I, the one thing, there is a lot of things I enjoy, but one thing I enjoy in particular is now I can choose which people I work with. I can hire people I want to work with. I can hire bright, motivated people that I think the whole group can work with well. And that is something that I, for example, missed at some places that I've been in the um, the group then grew, initially there were two people, three people, five people, but then they grew ten, now we're about fifteen, and I think that is a nice sign. So, if, we, if I summarize within Switzerland, I basically moved around, but not that much, and I'm pretty close to where I grew up in the end, which for me is nice, but again, that is something, a privilege, uh, that is sometimes a bit difficult, and that is um, limiting the possibilities you have. So if you're open, and I advise you to be more open than I am, um, you have many more possibilities. So just again, to, to sum summarize, I did my, all my education in Zurich, so in Switzerland, then moved to Boston for my master's thesis, moved back for the PhD thesis to Switzerland, moved back to Boston for the postdoc, and now finally I'm back in Switzerland.